Hey guys, my name's Justin. I'm uh, I'm here today, and I'm going to show you how to make some wheels in Blender. Um, it's going to go over some of the add-ons I use. We'll go over um, how to model a wheel using just like a portion of it, because with a wheel you don't have to model the whole face at once. You can model just a portion of the wheel and use something called an array to duplicate the wheel around in a circle. And we'll use a handy little plugin to to help us with that because. Circular arrays are an absolute pain to set up in Blender. We'll also go over some vertex painting so that you'll have some nice dark uh, crevices, so to say. And then right at the end of the video, I'll quickly briefly cover lots um, and what my main goals are with those. And then after that, we'll send you over to Stuart who will show you the conversion side of the wheel. So to start with, I have created a handy little blend file for those who use Blender. Um, and in there is the different tires that the game uses. Um, of course, you can use your own. There are some other creators who use their own wheels and textures and all that lot. And you're free to use those. These are just the vanilla wheels and it's what I use at the minute. Um, thing. So as this, for, for now, I've got this SUV tire. And if we go in shaded view, I've made sure that the material will shine when it needs to shine. So the barrel, for example, is mapped to a bit of chrome down here. So it'll be chromey, and if it's matte to here, it'll be matte like the the wheel itself. Um, so I've got the SUV tires, which are just the SUV tires, and then we've got the drift tires, which I believe cover the uh, the tuner tires. They're just named drift in game for some reason. And then we've got sport and high end. They cover the sports high end wheels. Off road, the new off road ones, which look like this chunky boys. And then we also have. Um, high-end sports all that lot muscle and low rider and tuner all use the same tire um, and then we also have some bolts i'm still to finish this but there'll be some nice high resolution bolts for you to use provided by roostar um, so thanks to him for letting me use this in the project file so start we'll create a new project nice and easy and i'll show you the add-ons that we'll be using in this video so to start with we've got two add-ons that are built into blender itself so the first add-on we need is loop tools, just go ahead and enable it. And we also need image as planes. So just search for image and then import export, import images as planes. The import images as planes is a pretty simple one. You, it allows you to import an image and it will automatically apply it to a plane, which you can move around in 3D space. And I find it a little bit easier to work with than um, putting images as backgrounds. It's just a little bit nicer. The second one is something called loop tools. So what loop tools allows you to do it has a new um, thing. So if we subdivide this a couple of times and then select, for example, the outer loops, if you then press, I'm using 2.7 controls, so this is why it's not really a modeling tutorial, mainly for people who know what they're doing. So if you open up your vertex contact menu, for me, that's W, that's 2.7 controls, you have this new add-on thing, uh, this bit here called loop tools. And in loop tools, you have a bunch of different things. So for example, if we hit circle, it will automatically arrange all of those vertexes into a circle. Um, so we'll mainly be using this for the relax feature, which allows us to relax corners a little bit and create more uh, smoother topology when and where when and where it's needed. Then we will also need the circular array add-on. Uh, I'll link you the Blender Market. It's optional to donate, but otherwise you can scroll down to the GitHub down here and just download it. Download normally. And once you've enabled it, um, you can import it. So what we'll do is we'll delete this side of the planes. And then we open our side menu. So for me, that's N. And then there's a new option here called Circular Array. If you hit Create Array, you'll see that this funky arrow thing has been made. So whatever way this arrow is facing is the way your array will be going. So that, right now, it's actually facing the correct way because we want it to array sort of around this arrow, but it's arraying too much. So what we can do, click on this arrow, and then you can adjust the count of them. So we actually need four, and now you can see that we only have this portion so made. So if I edit this here, you'll see that it changes everything here. And that's how we make a portion of a wheel. Um, you can also change the value. So if you want it to go around 180 degrees, you can do that. Um, but we need 360 degrees because a wheel is 360 degrees. The final add-on we then need is Vertex Color Master. This is a very handy tool to Vertex Paint. Um, and Vertex Paint allows us to then assign values 
uh, from red, green, and blue. We'll be using the red channel. And red channel in GTA is um, the darkness. So it adds like a, a something called um, AO. And AO will help accentuate some parts. And to use that, it's pretty, also pretty simple. So just activate it, you normally would. When you're in edit mode, you can select some vertexes. So I'm gonna select these here. Just to show you what it does, I'm gonna click vertex up here. You see there's a white. So now that with those selected, we'll go to vertex mode. Make sure to enable the vertex button here. Find VCM in our panel. Then we'll isolate the red channel. I usually use a value of around 0 0.8, but it depends what I'm painting, really. Then you hit fill the value, and you'll see that it already goes a little bit dark. Hit apply changes, and go back to object mode, and you can see that now the corners are bluish. Um, my materials will actually show you the darkness and thing, but we'll, we'll show you that when we get to it. Um, I hope that's a useful explanation of the, the tools. We'll obviously go through it all when we actually start making the wheel itself. So, the most important step to making your wheel is deciding on the wheel itself. I struggle with this a lot. I usually just tell, get other people to tell me what wheel to make and I'll make it. Um, but there are also some things you need to consider when deciding on a wheel. So, most wheels, you'll find about 80%, 90% of wheels are wheels that you can mirror. So you only have to model half of the spoke, you mirror that spoke, and then you array the spoke around in a circle. So that is something like this. So this might look really complex, but if you break it down, let me just, I don't have anything to draw. So you basically slice this spoke in half like this, and you only have to model this portion. Then you mirror it to the other side. So now you have this whole chunk and then you array this whole chunk around. Because in, in reality, it's only one, two, three, four, five spokes. It's just a spoke that splits up into multiple parts. So this is the most common kind of wheel. This is the easiest wheel to model. Um, so these are these piss easy, at least for me, obviously. But um, I think for you, it won't be too difficult either. Then you have wheels that do a different approach where you can't mirror the spoke, like this. So for this one, you would have to model I would say this pi, and then rotate that, array that four times. This is not too difficult again, because you could, again, you can just array it around once you've modeled this, this quarter of the wheel. Um, and then finally you have directional wheels. These are the hardest in my opinion. Yeah, it's a lot of spokes, but like your spoke itself is really difficult to figure out. So you've kind of got to do like a, a spoke that kind of works like this. It's it's such a hard one to figure out. Uh, so I'm not going to go over it in this video because even I'm still I'm still working out how to do directionals. For the sake of simplicity and for following along, I'm going to model T37, probably the most iconic wheel out there. So I'm going to search for TE37. To find a reference image, you want something that's flat on and preferably with a white or a simple background. So this one already stands out to me because it's perfectly flat on to me and it's high enough res where I can still pick out some of the details. So we're gonna open that in the new tab. Then we also want something at a quarter angle like this, maybe with a bright background just so we can see how deep the spokes go. That will also do us fine, it's just a another image we could put to the side just so when we're doing the depth of the wheel itself we can, we can figure that out. The wait time order has been extended, wow fantastic. So we're going to save this image, save image as, jpeg blah blah blah, and then we'll go blender, we're going to go edit, uh, no we're not going to edit, we're going to import, import image images as planes, we're going to go downloads, find the image, and there it is. You'll see that it won't be textured so you have to go up to the top right here and click texture and there you go now you have a plane with a texture on it the next step is deciding on the tire you want so for this i'm going to use a sports tire i want to make sort of a sporty t37 you know your typical te37 so we're going to go file append and then we're going to go to wheel assets here wherever you save that to and just open it up then you go collection and then you find the tire you want so we want the sports tire for this so we're going to click sport plus high end to import all the lots and voila we now have tires so we're just going to close these categories and just hide, disable everything except from Sport L0. So the front of your wheel is where the brake disc is the most detailed. Uh, so this is like, it's the 
left orthographic view, so control three for me. Um, but you see the texture is kind of hard to see, so we're going to change matcap. I don't like working in this one, so we're going to drop down the arrow, go matcap, and we're going to pick this bottom left one here. I like working in this one a little bit better. It's a little bit orangey, but bluey, sorry, but I prefer working it. So we're going to go on a local view just to isolate our image, and we're going to quickly just trim it down a little bit. So I'll go edit mode, and I'm going to grab this edge. We're going to double tap G to slide it towards the rim edge. Do the same on all four corners just so we have a nice no fun nonsense image like that. And I'm also going to press A to select everything and just center it up here on the transform. Come out of local mode and now we've got to rotate it. So we'll go to front view and rotate it by 90 degrees. So it's now facing towards the, the correct side. G, Y, X, sorry, and Move it. Now we're going to scale it down a little bit towards the correct size. It's all dependent on your own wheel, so that's why I'm kind of just breezing for it until we got the size one. I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger because we've already got a barrel. We'll do about there. Okay, perfect. So, like I explained earlier, this is a pretty simple wheel to make. So it's only got five. One, two, three, four, five. I can't count. One, two, three, four, five, six spokes. Yeah, six spokes. Six, I can count. Six spoke wheels. And we're going to slice it like this. And it will mirror it and then we'll array it around. So, first off, I'm going to rotate it just so the spoke is facing directly up. Makes life a little bit easier. Like that. And then we're going to hit Ctrl A, rotation scale, just to make it perfect. Then we're going to go into local mode and we're going to drag this back here just so it's in the background. And we're going to move this 3D cursor back to the center. So I'm going to press Shift S and move cursor to world origin. I don't know what it is for you 32.9 commands or whatever. But make sure your 3D cursor is on the center. So I'm, you can also press space and do cursor to origin, etc. Then we're going to hit Shift A and we're going to do circle. And then we've got the dialogue up here. So first off, we're going to rotate it 90 like this, so it's facing the correct way. And we're then going to scale it down a little bit. I try and just match the center hub first, it's kind of where I start. We're going to start there. Now we have to do a bit of math. Luckily in Blender you can do math yourself, which is even better. So we've got to take the spokes, so which is 6, and then times it by the number 6. So if you have 5 spokes, you times it by 6. If you have six spokes times by six, you have, if you have ten spokes times by six. So we're gonna do five, start six, five times six, which is thirty. Thirty is a quite a low, so we're actually gonna double it so we have sixty to work with, then it's nice and high high resolution. Now we're gonna go into edit mode and you can see we've got a bunch of vertices. So we're going to press E and then S to just extrude it out to cover the whole wheel. And then we're gonna S zero on this one just to center it there. Now we need to get our portion that we're going to that we're modeling so we're actually going to slide this in just a little bit like this just so we can see the spokes and then we're going to grab this edge here which is the other end of the spoke and delete it vertices like that and then we're going to come to this side here so where the halfway point is in your your um your portion and delete this one as well and then we've got our slice that we'll work with Going to link select these, press L and then select and then also delete those. There we go, we now have our have our portion. We're now going to go into circular array, click create array, and you'll see that we have a beautiful array created. Um, if, you hit, if you find that it's, for example, your arrow is pointing like upwards, like this or downwards, just make just rotate your arrow so it's pointing in the direction you need. Now you see that it's kind of looking a bit wonky because we still have to mirror the spoke. So we're going to modifiers, hit mirror, and then drag this before the array, very, very modifier, and change the axis to Y because that's the axis you'll need. And just like that, you now have a portion of the wheel ready for you to model. Now, to make your life a little bit easier, so you can see, we're going to 
go into the object properties down here, click the viewport display, and then hit wire. Then you can see the texture image bind and still have your um, vertices, etc. all here. I'm gonna quickly merge all the vertices here so we now have one solid piece. So the reason why we've put this 3D cursor here is we're gonna change the scaling mode. So up here at the top, we're gonna to click the, the pivot point mode and then change it to 3D cursor. This means, so if I now grab this edge and scale, it's gonna scale from that center point. If I, for example, did like medium point, it would scale from the median and it would get all funky and out of whack. So we're gonna keep it on 3D cursor and I'm gonna just scale it. As you see my 3D cursor's already reset, so cursor to world origin and just scale it out like so. Now we've created a basic circle, and if you look in here, it will be in the center of that, but that's fine, we'll, we'll come back for that. So as you can see, we've now created a the, the pie that you'll be modeling your wheel in. So now we get to the fun bit of actually creating the wheel. All right, so now we've got the basic pie or quarter or whatever the hell people call it set up we can start modeling some bits um i typically start off with the center so we're going to create this curve here now because i've merged it i can't create a loop so i'm going to quickly just take the knife tool slice it across and then double pack chap g to slide it then i can press e to conform it to one side so we'll make the nice circle again and then just like that we've got the curve there we need one below it as well. So I might actually take this and start at the bottom. So we'll do here, take another loop, bring it there. Take another loop, bring it about there-ish. Take another loop, bring it there. And now we've got the loops needed for the this area here. And now we get to the fun bit, which is this here. So we need to create a loop let's say about here and we're actually going to take it until like this slide it up just a little bit and there we're just going to make it go arch up a little bit like that just so we have a we start for another loop actually no we're going to do this we're going to bring it around like that slide up by one and then we'll leave it like that and then we'll take this one and then we'll resume the loop here and we'll do some topology bits. Actually, no, so we'll use the knife tool. The knife tool is usually a better way to do it. We'll keep this here and then we'll press K, press the knife tool, and we'll slice our way up, making sure that we have enough. The corners I typically do about three, and then I can add more detail to it later. So I'll do one, two, three, like this. And because we're flat, we can just drag around polygons when and where needed. So we're actually then gonna delete this in a bit, like so, and mm, mm, I'm trying to think. Actually, we're gonna delete the vertices like this because we need this bit of loop here. I'm actually gonna do E S and just bring it out like that. Okay, so we're already starting to look a little bit like a T37, but the topology is all kind of fucked. But we'll get to that. So we need to continue this up just dead straight. So I'm gonna press C to conform like that, and then we'll press this and we'll do the same. And we'll slowly start to get to topology now. So we're gonna press K, slice this across, do the same for this one, do the same for this one, because you want vertical loops when we add I'm going to add depth and I'm going to drag this in like this because the spoke is actually a little bit thinner. Um, yeah, that'll do. And then we'll create this one, do that. We'll delete this edge loop like this. Leave that there for now. And we'll do this. The rest really now is all about your own topology knowledge. I can't really help you because it applies to different wheels, but I'll happily go through my thought process and anything that I pick up uh, or change or do that something that could be applied to a different wheel, I'll, I'll go through. 
with you guys. Um, so we'll do this. I'm trying to keep this edge one as close to the inner loop as possible, so this circle, because then we know that it's going to be perfect smooth. It doesn't matter if there's an extra um, vertice here like this, as long as it still follows that loop. So it looks funky, but it's, it works because it's still that same curve, so to say. So we're slightly getting there already. We've kind of got the basic T37, the iconic shape going. Um, what we'll actually do now is we'll take this loop, this loop, this edge, I keep saying loop, and we'll do this to about there, then to there, then to there, let's say there as well, and then there. And then we've got enough loops to do our barrel. Quite a lot of wheels you can also just hide and slide it into a barrel. Um, it's something you just really got to experiment with and play with before. Um, I can't really yes, explain how it works. So I'm quite happy with this shape. I might make the spoke just a little bit thinner because it's quite fat. <laughs> Maybe remove the image, the reference image, just a little bit so it's even in the middle. Like that, yeah. There we go. Now I can see that I need to move this one up there. There we go. And then once we've done the curve, we can then uh, apply some subdivision, some relaxing, and start to get the shape that we really want. So we're now going to switch back to this and set it to textured, and then we can see our image again. So you can already see here that this inner bit needs to go in like so. We'll do about that, let's say. I think that looks pretty good. And then we get to this barrel here. And uh, so this whole bit, we're going to add a loop here. This whole top bit, including this, kind of suddenly goes in really deep. Kind of like that really, doesn't it? And then these all then start to come up at various angles. We'll leave that flat and then we'll do this. And then we'll do that. I'd say that looks pretty good for a barrel. And what I like to do, just because I like to add a little bit of curvature, I go into proportional editing, so you press O or go up here, select the center vert, press G, X, and then you can use proportional editing to create that curve. Because it's a little friendly wheel that I'm creating, I can kind of just do what I like. Um, but if you're going for accuracy, then maybe you prefer to the actual wheel. I can add another loop in there just so I can grab it and put on the loop instead so we can do that. I think it looks pretty good. Um, and you can see now that we're getting some weird looking reflection. So we need to turn on merge. So we'll go to our modifiers. And we've got merge already on our mirror, which is why you don't see it on the mirror point. But we need to turn it on on the right. So we click down here, click merge. And it was first and last copies. That set this to a 0 0.001. And when we shade smooth, it should look all right, I think. Otherwise, we'll have to look into that. But I think it should be right. But this needs to be flat anyway. So we'll do, oh shit. Do it from last, so I'll add some. Okay, I'm just going to be flat like that. This is also going to be flat. i just curve it manually a little bit. some more topologies so let's not do that. Undo, 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 undo. There we go. Okay. We'll come back to that section. Let's shade smooth and then apply some weighted normals. So press W, shade smooth. We'll go to 
moves over here, click order smooth, set this to 180. I'm going to your modifiers tab and click weight normals. Make sure it's the last in your modifier list and then hit keep sharp. We'll then go to edit mode and go to edges and just select the edges. For now we'll be sharp but we'll later we'll add some bevel modifier. Um, we're just getting the correct shape first. So we're going to add to mark sharp there. We'll add mark sharp along here as well just to give it some, some shazam. And what's, why is the wheel doing that? What the wheel doing? So we're actually got to just make sure that all of these loops here are dead flat. So for some reason it's bending and I don't want it to bend. Hmm. Could it be that our arrow isn't pointing straight? No, it is. Could it be that it's pointing the wrong way? Let's swing around her maybe. And look. No, it's not. It's definitely this edges here. Ah, okay, there we go. What was it working earlier? That's fucking weird. Typical, isn't it? So, select these. Edges, SX. SX, 0, SX0. 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 Better go down the barrel. Straight. I'll we'll just do the same. We'll go along SX0 on all of these just to make sure that they're flat. We can add some curvature on a bit, but we don't need it just yet. So I'm pretty content with that basic shape. I might even take this inner revert, go proportional edit, and just pull it in just a little bit like that. Then oh, and I'll flatten this bit off like that. What I like to do as well is I cut this here. So we have another loop, and then pull this out, and then pull this out again. Then we've got a nice, nice curve instead of it being flat in the middle. Only do that if you can get away with gear with it in your poly count. But we'll get to optimization and all that jazz in a bit. Don't really need it just yet. So let's get rid of that. It looks a bit harsh. I think that's better, and we'll still get to the curve in a bit. Okay, so let's now deal with this. This is still very sharp. So we're actually going to control B, bevel it a couple of times. So we have some more loops. I'll just slide them, separate them out a little bit better. Add one down here as well. Then, because I want it to do... This is now sort of where I'm taking, just doing the rest on my own. I'm not really looking at reference imaging. I can still bring this up occasionally, but I'm pretty just on my own here now. So now I'm just gonna roughly get the shape, but we'll use loop tools later to properly get everything looking nice and smooth, which is the, the beauty of loop tools. So I think, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So now select this edge, loop tools, relax. So you can see that it's now nice and smooth. I've got to do the same down here because this is quite ugly. So we're gonna press B, we're gonna do that. Christ. It's hard figuring out your topology. Tries are okay, but of course you want to avoid them where you can. Because they're not ideal. The fork is going on here. Alright, I think we're good. I think if I do that, yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. Crisis of Earth, we got the quads. Not exactly how I wanted the quad to be, but it's something better. And we'll just slide this whole loop. Oh, we can't we can't do this edge, remember, because we've got to keep it somewhat flat. So as long as we don't disturb the barrel edge, we're alright. Okay, I think that's good. That shape is looking better. Um, I might also then take the edges and then do, do it this way, the relax this way. Like so. That way it's also a bit more spaced out and the curve is a lot nicer. 
to look at. And I might slide this one like that. And give this one a slight bevel. Like that. You know, that shape's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that shape. So let's now do this inside bit here. So we're going to select this. We're going to hit F. And then we're going to do I to inset. And then we're going to press B to get rid of the boundary. And we're just going to inset it a little bit. I think that's pretty good. And we'll delete this face like so. Now we've got this loop that we can then do GX. Move it in. Um, let's move it in a little bit again like that. And we'll mark this sharp. And we'll mark this sharp. And we'll mark this sharp. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good in terms of in terms of shape of the wheel. Let's actually line up with the the tire. So we're going to take this. You have to do it in edit mode, otherwise. I, actually, no. With the circular rotor, you can just move it, but I prefer to do it in edit mode anyway. So G X, move it along, and just line up with the barrel. So it's only to note with GTA wheels. For your tires to pop properly in game, you need a hole in between your bar your thing. So you have to have a gap between your barrel and your um, tire itself. Uh, just something to keep in mind. So we'll set the cursor to weld, scale it from the cursor. That way it doesn't get all fucky wuggy, fucky wuggy, fucky. And we'll scale it just so it's like this. I'm actually going to make it clip into the original barrel, just for simplicity's sake. I prefer to do that over crane no. And um, we're going to have it sit about that depth, I think, will look pretty good. And then we can quickly go to our tire here. We'll delete this inner bit here. I'll actually edit, go into edit mode. And hmm, let's see, we'll delete this edge. And we'll delete this edge, delete this edge. We'll take this and just do in like that. That way I think that will look pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this so far. I think this is going to look pretty good. So next step now we'll be adding some more smoothness to it. So we'll start with a bevel modifier and uh, we'll go from there. So we've now modelled the, the, the first stages of the rim so to say. Now we're going to go in have a look at what we've made and make any changes before we start adding some bevels and some more details. First step I usually do actually is go into overlays on the top left and click statistics and you can see how many polygons we're at. I try and aim for around 10,000. If it goes over a little bit too much, it's not too much of a deal, but it's um, uh, preferable to stay around 10k. Um, and then I'll explain lots when we, when we get to that. But we're at 8k, which is all right. It's quite a lot but it's not too much and we can easily optimize it quite a bit if we need to so let's get into this so something I actually noticed whilst I was gone here is that this isn't very smooth so we're just going to select this here and select this here and just hit relax oh, okay. we do this then use the brush tool and use the brush tool here and then hit relax nope okay we're going to manually do it so we're going to take this edge just slide in a little bit Want it to be somewhat not ugly. I think that's all right. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with this curve up here. So yeah, all right. So let's add some. Bevels. Let's you know. Let's take this. We're gonna do this, I think, because then we can add some bolts in there, and that will look nice and cool. Okay, let's add some modifiers. So we're going to now go into your modifier, hit bevel, and then we're going to set the limit angle to weight. I'm going to set this to, for now, 0 0.001, um, but we can change that when we need to. So let's now go into edge mode, and we'll just select a couple of edges. So we're going to set this edge here. I usually start off with the spokes. Select this one, select this one, and then we're going to clear the sharp. And it will control E in an edge bevel weight instead of to 1. And you'll see now if you go wireframe mode that it's now got bevels. If I turn this on and off, you'll see it's now getting a bevel via a modifier. So it's a non destructive way of adding a bevel, which is fantastic. Um, and then we're going to drag the weight normals and put it above. I think you can see that it looks a bit nicer. 
Uh, let's play around with the width. If I make it a little bit normal one, you can see it's way too thick. So I think what we have is actually all right to be fine. To be honest, uh, I think that's perfect. So for this one here as well, edge bevel weight one, clear the sharp, and yeah, that's looking good, I think. What we're actually going to do is we're going to, you can see here that this corner is not very nice, so we're going to select this one all the way down to there, and do the same for this, and this, and this, and then do relax, and we can do anything that we want it to do. Hmm. So let's take this lot. Just drag it in a little bit. Should bring the vertex guide for this, but that's fine. And then we'll do relax. Yeah, there you go. Now it's a little bit nicer. You won't really notice in that game. So that's good. And then we're going to add more bubbles. So you can see we're still well under 9k. So we're going to start adding to the barrel up here. So these two, clear sharp. Bevel point instead. You can see it looks a little bit nicer than having a sharp edge. Get the sharp, add bevel, and voila. And just for good measure, I'm going to go down here and add it to this one here as well. Just like that. When we add some bolts in it, we'll add up the polycam a little bit more, so I think we'll be pretty satisfied like this. And to be fine. Wait, okay. I mean, that kind of does look cool, but I think we won't do that. Just seeing how it looks if we extend it in just a little bit more, but I think I'm happy with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how that's looking. Okay, cool, and then we can delete this edge here like that, because you won't see it, because it's digging into the barrel like that. Okay, cool, we might even take this edge and do Do this with it. Okay. Very m more like aggressive how in, in it comes. Like that. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, that looks good like that. Very aggressive barrel. Okay, so let's add some materials. So we're gonna make this paint a painted wheel, so we're going to go to materials and we're going to pen the wheel paint material. If you don't have it, you can do file append, find your wheel assets, um, and then go to material and import the wheel paint material. See that nothing much will change here yet, but if you go into alt view, you'll see that it's now pitch black. So, how to fix this? We're going to UV maps and vertex colors, just drop them down. Click this add and make sure you have a vertex color layer called coal. Coal is referenced in the material lab for our darkness. We'll get to that soon. Um, and we don't need a dark layer for now. We'll get to that when we're happy with our wheel. Now we don't really want this center bit to be paintable. So we're gonna go into our face mode and we're gonna select the center. Might even do it like this. Create a new material, add a material and vehicle tie wall black. And then we're gonna project from view like this. Stuart, don't kill me, please. Uh, we'll, we'll fix it later, don't worry. Go into UV editor and then just map it somewhat nicely to this, this center bit here. Just make sure it's somewhat centered and somewhat okay. There we go. So now we're starting to get a nice looking Right, what we're actually going to do, we're going to take the barrel, so just highlight like this, we're going to take the entire barrel, L, to select linked, like this, just make sure we've got everything, and then also assign this to wheel paint. There, yeah. and you can see what I mean here now with the vertex paint. So, because this bit here has been painted to be dark, because it's behind the wheel, there's not really any light there, it'll be darker than the um, wheel itself. Uh, hide the reference image and we don't need that. But you can see here, I mean, it looks a lot nicer. A little more real. Um, so, now that we've done that, let's 
add some bolts. So, 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 let's get some bolts appended in. So we'll go file, append, bolts, and we should now have some beautiful bolts. We're going to hide the L1 and L2 for now. Just deal with this L0. So we're going to edit mode and select everything GX straight forwards. Now we have a nice looking bolt. Scale it up a little bit. Drag it up a little bit. And let's put it there ish for now. Let's add an array so it creates an array. And we've got to make sure it's facing the right way. So 90. Now we go. It's facing the right way. And with these, I typically select five because that's how many lugs there should be. Uh, now we've got the array set up, we can take this edge here, double tap G and then press C to slide along the axis like that. That way the texture will go nicely, otherwise it will just stretch it. So G and slide like that and then we've got some bolts sticking out. Um, I'm not going to do holes for this but you can uh, use a knife tool or boolean and create some bolt holes. Uh, just Basically, just do doof 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 like that and make your hole and add your bevels and all that. But I'm not going to do it for the sake of this tutorial. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how that looks. It's kind of ugly, if I'm honest. I'm not very happy. So let's make this a little bit less deep. Let's do this. Yeah, I think that's better. A little bit less deep like that. Okay, okay, okay. I'm liking this now. Maybe this? No. Maybe this? No. You know what? I think we'll keep it. We'll keep it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this entire shape of this wheel, if I'm honest. No, I might just do this. Yeah, it's like that. Mm. No, actually, I think it's just a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that's right. That's better. This whole area down here looks lovely now. Okay, so now let's do some vertex painting. So, what we want to do with vertex painting is we want to use it to create that darkness you see here. So, what that typically does is for the inside of these spokes here, so this edge here would then be painted. Um, and sometimes I do this bit as well, so it goes dark towards the center, but I'm not going to do it on this wheel because I don't think it will make sense. So, we're going to select this edge here and we're going to go into vertex mode. Then we're going to click the vertex button up here, and you should see some white dots of your selected edge. Then we go up to here to VCM, Vertex Color Master. We're going to press R and then act, isolate active channel, which so should be red here, and then isolate active channel. And you should get this menu up. Now we're going to, I'm going to use a value of 0.8, that's kind of a go to value for me. You can have a play, the higher the value, the lighter it is. So if I hit, um, if I go into normal mode here, if I hit fill value here, you'll see it's a little bit dark. If I go like 0.1, it's going to be really dark. And then obviously 1 is like nothing. So I'm going to go with 0.8, I'm going to hit fill value, and then hit apply changes. And you see it's now blue. Now we've got object mode, and now going to alt Z, you see that it's gone slightly darker towards the edge. It's such a subtle, subtle change, but it's perfect for what it is really. And that's pretty much it. Something also to note is this stem down here. So I thought I had separated the stem, but apparently not. So I'm going to select everything in face mode. Make sure we do select the rim and all the barrel and all that a lot. And we're just going to place the stem somewhere where it makes sense. Where it is is all right. I'm just going to extend out a little bit. Maybe drag it out. Maybe put it there. Maybe I think rotate it just so it's facing a little bit more upright. Like that. I think that's good. A little bit awkward to grab with the, the spoke, but hey, wheel designers don't care about the users. They care about the looks. So we're also going to then grab this edge here in edge mode. And we're also going to drag it out to the wheels here. What this is for, so if you look from this side of the wheel, you'll see that there is, um, like, it's just so that you don't have like an ugly gap. Think of it as like a spacer or whatever. So I'm going to drag it out here just to make sure it's up to the wheel like that. And then we're also going to grab the other end, so this bit here. We're going to press S to scale, and then we're going to do Shift X to scale on everything except from the X axis, and just drag it up so it's covering most, like up to something that looks as 
covering as much the back of the wheel as possible, but also doesn't look retarded. So I'm going to go with that. I think that's good. Something to note is that you don't need to create a back for your wheels. I obviously I'd love to make a back for my wheels, and you can see there the normals are actually facing the wrong way. So we're going to go into this. Press A, Control N. Well, that's face perfectly. Um, but yes, you don't need to create a back for your wheels. It's kind of weird, but Rockstar don't do it, so why would I do it? And it just adds to the polys of the wheels. Now, one final mapping thing we're going to do is we're going to select everything, deselect the center. So we just selected this bit here. And now hit U, project from view, and then we're going to go to tile black PNG. So we've got this texture. Now here on the right is Chrome, so I'm going to put cursor here and do 2D cursor S0, oops, make sure it's like everything, S0, there we go. Now it will be Chrome, when you, if you, for example, get rid of the paint and do tile or black, it will be Chrome instead of um, like a, so this other side is like a matte sort of colour, um, which I don't really use much, I just do Chrome or paint, those are the options you get on my wheel packs. But, I mean, it's down to personal preference. Just have a play, see what you like, see what you don't like. Um, that's the fun of it, really. So, one of the final things to do on a wheel is to make lots. For this tutorial, I'm not going to be making lots because um, I won't be using it in my pack. Um, it's just purely for this tutorial, I've already made a wheel similar to this. Um, but I won't really be using it for my pack, so I'm not going to bother making lots. It's just for this tutorial. So there are a few things you need to consider that you absolutely have to do lots for your wheels because if you don't do lots, when you drive away, even if your car doesn't have lots, like it's just permanently L0, your wheels will still disappear. It will still switch to an L1 and the L1 will be empty. So your wheels will just vanish. So to me, it's important to have lots, which is why I do lots on all of my wheels. They're really easy to do because for like just your L1 alone, if I turn off this bevel modifier, Bam, it's already like a thousand polys less I and mean, you can you can easily just dissolve some of these loops and be on the way. So I set myself some limits. So for L0, I use 10k, round 10k. If it's like a really high multi-spoke wheel, I might go a little bit over, but that's fine. Um, I just do a bit more aggressive lots. Then L2, round about 6k. Then L2, wait, L1 is around about 6k. And then L2 is around about 4k. And with that, you'll be you'll be perfect. I think Stuart might show you how to convert lots. It's pretty easy. It's the same as you would normally convert anything, really. Um, it is pretty simple. And um, yeah, I think we're pretty much done in here. One final thing before exporting, because this texture here doesn't really turn nice. You can see that it's a bit hexagonal. So what we'll actually do? Make a copy of this. Oh, I'll name it. Back up. And we'll just hide it, plain outside. We'll even do this, so hide it, completely turn it off, just you'll never see it again unless you enable it back on. Um, and then we're going to apply the mirror, apply the radial, and then you have the mesh like this. And then you can select the faces on the inside, like so. You project from view, and we're also going to. And we're going to bring it to this bit here, line it up, cursor to selected, and just get it in like that. And then there you go, you get a much nicer looking centerpiece, which looks lovely jubbly. And then after that, invert your selection, and then project from view, set it to your chrome bit over here again if you're going chrome, S0, and then voila, you'll be chrome when you apply the tile generic material and then the final final step is dirt mapping so we'll go into here we'll go UV maps we'll create a new UV channel called dirt so you can name it dirt with this selected then edit mode and select everything project from view and it won't look too pretty in game but it'll look pretty enough set it so it fits neatly in this area like that and it'll look ugly really ugly but that's fine and you can hit UV map here again one way we can test actually is by changing this to the shader editor this is my material setup I haven't played the normals because it usually looks pretty ugly for some reason and then we come up here so you go to favorable generic tarball 
wall. So this is the value here. I might label it a little bit better, but for now it's just got to deal with it. And you can drag this factor and you can see that this is the, how the dirt looks on the tire wall material. Got to do on the paint as well, so this is the paint. It's not working. Fantastic. Um, oh wait, is it this one? Ah, there we go. So it's this, this slider here, because it's mixing with the colour rather than the texture. So does the slider you adjust for the thing. And there you go. Beautifully dirt mapped, all you really need in life, and is ready for conversion.